Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about soloing with brushes. So there I was just getting warmed up a little, playing some different strokes. So brushes are great for soloing because not only can you use them like sticks, but you can use them many other ways for scraping, for rolling, for sweeping. So there's all kinds of techniques that you can use. You even saw me doing a little of fluttering in the air, like that, and some rim rolls like this. You can also do this kind of stuff. So there's all kinds of cool effects you can do. The most important thing you need to do when you're playing with brushes, though, is practice with the metronome, because there's so much less bounce with the brushes than sticks the tendency is for the time to get out of hand if you're not used to playing with them. The other thing, if you watched um, my other brush videos, is that you want to be able to have a nice attack with them. So like this. Turn the snares off. So there I'm using the tips of the brushes, the very tips, and I'm creating a lot of resistance by using my fingers. If I don't do that, it sounds like this. So that's more like sticks, and then I'm using the whole brush, which is fine, but it, the tone gets a little bit uh, thick, and it's not as articulate. So one thing you can practice to do that is just rudiments, let's say paradiddles. So that was just a combination of singles, doubles, and triple paradiddles. And you see I have to use a lot of wrist. So unlike sticks where you use a lot of fingers, uh, you have to use a lot of wrist when you play brushes for articulation. Another thing to practice is singles. So you see there, that's singles, but using with, uh, with using a lot of, a lot of wrist, all right? Then you can practice your scrapes. So the way I do this is I put my finger on top of the brush to create more of a controlled motion. Right? And then with the left hand, you would do that kind of motion. Or you can use your arm. So. Now, a lot of times, if you're in a loud situation, uh, a lot of crowd noise in a club or something, you wouldn't be able to hear the brushes doing stuff like that. But if you're in the studio mic'd, it's a perfect time to do that because, uh, you know, the engineer has control over the overhead mic. Now, for these videos, as always, I'm just using this one overhead mic like I always do just to make it sound as natural as possible. It's a great mic. It's probably one of the best mics you can buy, uh, AKG C24. But... Uh, Usually the, the drums will be individually mic'd, snare drum, toms, bass drum, and that way the engineer can maybe turn things up, you know, if you're doing something like that. Okay, you could tell him or her to do that if they don't know already. So let's, let's talk about some ideas for trading eights and fours. Um, what I always say to do, and I know that some of you know this if you've watched my other soloing videos is to put the metronome on two and four and practicing with brushes is no exception to this so we'll try trading some eights quarter note equals 210 and the metronome's on two and four one two one two three
All right, got a little goofy there, but it's a lot of fun. Now you don't always have to have the hi-hat going. Uh, I had it going probably 75% of the time. It's helpful if you're playing with musicians who don't necessarily have great time, uh, you should keep it going. But if you're playing with good musicians who listen, it's not always great to have it on two and four. It gets a little monotonous after a while. The other things you could do though is you could splash it like this. splash it and that would be heard pretty strong as well. So those are just some ideas, uh, different techniques. Again, I did scraping, I did um, sweeps, all right, I did some trills, just all kinds of things to give you some ideas. Now, let's talk about great brush players and there's certainly just tons of them, all right. Um, although some of the greats did not use brushes a lot, like Tony Williams didn't use brushes too much, but one of my favorite recordings of all time is Wynton Marcellus' first CD, and on that, it's just called Wynton Marcellus, but Tony Williams and Ron Carter are on most of that record. And there's a tune on there called Hesitation, which is a rhythm changes tune, it's about this fast. And that, to me, is just a great track. He has the uh, snares off on that. And he's not really soloing, but the whole track, he plays some amazing fills, and it's just great. So check that out. That used to be my benchmark for playing through that tune. I think it's around eight minutes long. So I would just try to play through that every day when I was younger. Now, there's certainly a lot of modern uh, great brush players. Um, Jeff Hamilton. Clayton Cameron, um, and Ch Antonio Sanchez plays beautiful brushes. Uh, there's some great Brazilian uh, drummers who play great brushes, more in a, in a Brazilian setting, not necessarily playing, you know, bebop. And then, um, you know, the older guys who played great brushes were Billy Higgins, played beautifully, Billy Hart. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He played fantastic brushes. Obviously, Philly Joe Jones, Art Taylor, Mel Lewis, uh, Nick Ciroli is another really great brush player out from out west, Jake Hanna, Ed Sof, one of my favorite all-time brush players, list goes on and on. Uh, so you need to just listen as much as possible. No one plays brushes the same. And that will give you solo ideas. And the main thing I could tell you is what I do is I transcribe things but it's hard with brushes to transcribe, so if you can, you know, check out some videos on YouTube, that would be the best. Just look up any of those guys I mentioned and look at their, their technique, their brush playing. Uh, and even Buddy Rich, when you could get him playing brushes, uh, was just f fantastic uh, brush player. So we'll, um, hopefully that gives you some ideas, but we'll close out with a little solo here, a little up-tempo solo. And we'll bring the metronome up a little bit here. One, two, one, two, three.